Hey guys, in today's video we will discover a story of overcoming and profound transformation. Our protagonist has suffered devastating losses, faced a near-death experience, and returned with a revelation about the future that could change everything. If you have ever experienced difficult times or wonder what happens after life, this story is for you. Before we start, let us know in the comments which city you are watching and, if you are not yet subscribed to the channel, take the opportunity to subscribe and follow more stories like this. Let's go. Hello, my name is Rowena Driscoll, and I decided to share with you an experience that completely changed my life. I'm not a writer nor a speaker. I'm just someone who went through something extraordinary and feels like I need to tell you. I confess that I hesitated a lot before starting this story. It's not easy to relive certain moments, especially when they involve so much pain. But I feel like my story can bring comfort to people who, like me, have gone through difficult times or lost loved ones. It all started when I was 19. At that time, I was a young girl like any other, full of dreams and plans for the future. I was dating Ethan, an incredible guy I met in my first year of college. He was that kind of person who lit up any room, always with a smile on his face, always with a kind word for everyone. We completed each other in a way I had never experienced before. We made plans together. We dreamed of our own house. We talked about having children one day. It was the kind of love you believe will last forever. But one Friday night, I received a connection that would change everything. Ethan had been the victim of a robbery that ended in tragedy. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. One moment, one shot, and all our dreams were gone. I remember every detail of that night. The ringing of the phone, his mother's choked voice telling me the news, the ground that seemed to have disappeared beneath my feet. From that moment on, my life went into a downward spiral. I couldn't sleep, I could barely eat, and every corner of the city seemed to hold a memory of him that tore me apart inside. People tried to help, of course. I received visits from friends, advice from teachers. Even the pastor of the local church tried to console me, but nothing made sense. How do you move on when part of your heart has been ripped out? It was during this period that I got to know Lucas more deeply. He had been my friend since high school, but he became my main support after Ethan passed away. Lucas was different from the others. He didn't try to make me get over it, or say that time heals everything. He was simply there, listened to me, kept me company on bad days, which were almost all of them. If I had known that a few years later, I would also lose Lucas in a car accident, but that's a part of the story that still hurts too much to tell in detail now. What I can say is that his death was the final blow that sent me off the deep end. It was as if the universe was determined to take away everyone I loved from me. It was in this context of loss and despair that my near-death experience occurred, and that's what I mainly want to talk about, because it was there on the edge between life and death that I found answers that I never imagined possible. After losing Lucas, my life became a real chaos, at home, the situation didn't help. My parents were separating, and the constant arguments made the environment even more difficult. It was like I no longer had any safe haven, you know? That place where you can take refuge when everything is falling apart just didn't exist anymore. I started to isolate myself more and more. I stopped answering calls, cancelled last-minute appointments, and spent entire days locked in my room. People around me started to really worry, my mother even made appointments with a psychiatrist who prescribed me some medication for anxiety and depression. I took the medications, but they only seemed to numb the pain without really solving it. In a desperate attempt to make my parents understand what I was feeling, I wrote a letter. I remember spending the entire night writing, tears staining the paper as I tried to explain how abandoned I felt, how their separation was affecting me how the loss of Ethan and Lucas had left a void that seemed impossible to fill. I placed the letter on the kitchen table and left the house without destination. It was that night that I met Alex, an acquaintance from college. He was with a group of friends and invited me to a bar, saying I needed to clear my head. Normally, I would have refused. But that day, that day, I just wanted to escape everything, you know. I wanted to pretend I was a normal person, without all that baggage of sadness. The bar was crowded. The music was too loud, and the flashing lights made me dizzy. Alex and his friends drank and laughed, trying to include me in their conversations. At a certain point, someone, I still don't know who, offered some pills, saying they would help me relax. I had never been the type to do drugs, but in that moment, it felt like nothing else mattered. What difference would it make? I swallowed the pills without thinking twice. 
At first, I felt a rush of euphoria, as if all my problems had magically disappeared, but soon the feeling changed. The room started to spin, voices mixed strangely, and I could barely stay upright. Alex suggested that we go to his house, which was close to the bar, saying that I could get some rest. Along the way, I started to feel something different. It was no longer just dizziness or confusion. It was as if my body was becoming increasingly heavy and, at the same time, more distant. The streetlights seemed to leave trails in the air, and the sounds reached my ears as if I were underwater. The last thing I clearly remember is arriving at Alex's house and sitting on the couch. After that, everything started to go dark, and that's when my near-death experience began. What happened next is something that, even years later, I still have trouble putting into words. How can we explain sensations and experiences that seem to exist beyond our common vocabulary? But I will try to be as precise as possible. First, I felt like I was being pulled down, like my body was sinking through the couch. It was a strange feeling, but not scary, at least not at first. Then suddenly I realized I could see myself from above. I was there, lying on the couch, pale and still, while Alex and his friends chatted in the kitchen, apparently unaware that anything was wrong. It was a surreal moment, seeing my own body as if I were an outside observer. The next sensation was that of being swallowed by a dark tunnel. It wasn't like in the movies, where everything is scary and dramatic. It was more like, like when you're almost asleep and you feel that moment of abandonment, only much more intense. The darkness was complete, but not threatening. It was like a cosmic womb, welcoming in a strange way. And then the light came. Ah, the light. How to describe that light? It was like no light I had ever seen on Earth. It was alive, pulsating, and emanated a love so deep that it made me cry, not with my physical eyes, of course, but with my soul, if that makes sense. It was as if every particle of my being was being bathed in unconditional love, a total understanding of all that I was. As I approached this light, I began to feel presences around me. I didn't see defined shapes. They were more like energy fields, but I knew who they were. Ethan was there, Lucas too. We didn't speak with words. It was a different communication, as if our thoughts and emotions flowed freely between us. They showed me that they were okay, that death was not the end we imagined, and that all the suffering I was feeling had a greater purpose. It was at this moment that I received one of the most intriguing revelations of the experience. The presence showed me a specific date, November 15th, 2024. There was a very strong feeling that this date would mark the beginning of a new spiritual cycle for humanity, a period of profound transformation in collective consciousness. I didn't receive specific details about what would happen, just the certainty that it would be a significant moment of change. It's something I've carried with me ever since, watching and calmly waiting for events to unfold. Then I received another message, a voice, which wasn't exactly a voice in but a consciousness that communicated directly with my soul, showed me that every loss, every moment of pain I experienced, was part of a bigger plan. I saw how everything was interconnected, how each experience had prepared me for something broader. The presence also showed me visions of the future, revelations about changes that would come to humanity. I saw a period of transformation approaching, a time when people would begin to awaken to a higher consciousness. It was as if I could see the invisible threads that connect all things, the entire web of existence. Time did not exist in that place. I could have stayed there for minutes or for centuries. It was impossible to tell. But the most extraordinary thing was the feeling of belonging, of finally being at home. All the weight of my losses, all the sadness I carried, simply dissolved into that light. I understood that death was not the end, but just a transition to another state of existence. At that moment, I felt a peace that I had never experienced before. It was as if every question I had ever had had been answered, not with words, but with a deep, direct understanding. I saw that Ethan and Lucas weren't really dead, in the sense we usually think of them. They were more alive than ever, just in a different dimension than ours, and it was in this state of total understanding that I received the warning. It was not my time yet. There was something I needed to do, people who depended on me, lessons I still needed to learn and teach. The decision to return wasn't exactly mine. It was more like a mutual understanding between me and that presence of light. Returning to the physical body was like an electric shock. It's funny how, once you've experienced that lightness and expansion, returning to your body feels so limiting. It was like trying to stuff an entire ocean into a bottle. The first sensation was of weight, 
an immense weight. Every cell in my body felt heavy and painful. I woke up in the hospital with tubes and monitors connected to me. The first person I saw was my mother sitting next to the bed with deep circles under her eyes and a look that mixed relief and concern. Then I discovered that I had been unconscious for almost three days. Alex, frightened by my condition, had called an ambulance. The doctors said it was an accidental overdose and I almost didn't actually die. The first few hours after waking up were confusing. It was as if my brain was trying to process two completely different realities at the same time. On one hand, I had the vivid memory of that transcendental experience, the light, the unconditional love, the presence of Ethan and Lucas. On the other hand, I was there in a hospital room, with body aches and a medical team talking about tests and medications. My parents were there, together for the first time in weeks without fighting. The scare had been so great that they temporarily put their differences aside. When they saw me awake, they cried. My mother kept saying, thank God, thank God. My father, always more restrained, held my hand tightly, as if he feared I might disappear if he let go. For the first few days, I didn't tell anyone about the experience. How to explain something like this? I was afraid they would think it was the effect of the drugs or that I had gone completely crazy. The doctors, when they examined me, talked about hallucinations caused by a lack of oxygen to the brain. But I knew with every fiber of my being that what I had experienced was real, even more real than the physical world around me. The first person I told was Sandra, the night shift nurse. She had a special way, you know, those people you feel like you can trust just by looking. One night, when she came to check my vitals, I started talking. I told him about the light, about meeting Ethan and Lucas, about the feeling of unconditional love. To my surprise, she didn't look at me like I was crazy. Instead, he sat on the edge of the bed and listened to me attentively. Sandra told me that she had heard similar stories from other patients who had near-death experiences. She said that, in her 20 years of nursing, she had learned that there are things between heaven and earth that science still cannot explain. It was comforting to find someone who didn't try to rationalize or diminish what I had experienced. The doctors wanted me to undergo psychiatric care, fearing that I might attempt suicide again. I tried to explain that it wasn't a suicide attempt, that it was an accident, but they seemed skeptical. How can I explain that after experiencing that light, that love? The idea of taking my own life was impossible. I had seen, felt, that each life has a purpose, that each moment here has a greater meaning. During those days in the hospital, I spent a lot of time trying to process everything that had happened. It was as if each memory of the experience was a precious diamond that I needed to examine carefully, to understand every facet. At night, when the hospital was quieter, I would close my eyes and try to relive that feeling of peace, that deep understanding that I had experienced. The people who came to visit me noticed that something had changed in me. It wasn't just the fact that I was calmer or less depressed. It was something deeper, as if an inner light had been turned on. Even without talking about the experience, I knew I would never be the same person who walked into that hospital again. Coming home from the hospital was like entering a completely new world, even though everything looked the same on the outside, the same walls, the same furniture, but I saw them with different eyes. It's hard to explain, but it was like I could perceive an extra dimension to everything, not visually sat, but on a deeper level of understanding. The first noticeable change was in my grief over the loss of Ethan and Lucas. Not that I ever stopped missing it, it never went away, but the sharp pain, the one that seemed to tear me apart from the inside, had transformed into something different. It was more like a quiet assurance that they were okay, and that one day we would meet again. That encounter in the light had completely changed my perception of death. My parents noticed the change too. I remember one day I was sitting in the garden, watching a hummingbird, my mother approached, worried as she had been since the incident, and was surprised to see me smiling. You look different, she said, and I was. For the first time in years, I felt an inner peace that didn't depend on external circumstances. The process of separating my parents continued, but my way of dealing with it changed completely. Before, I felt like a victim of the situation, as if the universe was conspiring against me. After the experience, I could see that everyone was on their own learning path, including me. I stopped trying to stop them or blame myself, and I started accepting that sometimes love turns into something different than we imagined. The little everyday things took on a new meaning, the sunrise, the birdsong, even the sound of the rain. 
Everything seemed filled with a beauty that I had never noticed before. It was as if my senses had been amplified, not just physically but spiritually as well. I started meditating, something I was never interested in before. It wasn't because of anyone's influence. I simply felt a natural need to create moments of silence, perhaps in an attempt to reconnect with that peace I experienced during the NDE. At first, it was difficult to quiet the mind, but over time, it became more natural. One of the most significant changes was in relation to fear. Before us, I lived in fear of everything. Fear of losing more people I loved, fear of the future, fear of not being able to overcome the losses. After the experience, although some fears still existed, they no longer had the same power over me. It was as if I understood that there is something much bigger guiding us, even when we can't see the full picture. Some friendships naturally grew apart. The people I used to go out with to drink and try to forget about my problems were no longer part of my circle. It wasn't a conscious decision to walk away. We just didn't connect in the same way anymore. On the other hand, some friendships strengthened, especially with people who were able to accept my new way of seeing life without judging. I completely stopped taking psychiatric medications, always under medical supervision, of course. Not that I'm against medications, they have their place and their importance, but after the experience, that deep depression that consumed me simply didn't exist anymore. The doctors were surprised by my recovery, some were even skeptical, but the results spoke for themselves. The most interesting thing is that these changes did not happen forcedly. It wasn't like I consciously decided to change my life. The transformations happened naturally, as a consequence of that profound experience I had. It was as if that light I experienced continued to shine within me, illuminating every aspect of my life in a new and more meaningful way. One of the most challenging things after my NDE was trying to explain to people what had happened to me. How do you tell someone that you've been on the other side, that you've talked to people who have left, that you've experienced love so immense that it completely transformed your worldview? It is complicated. Some people walked away when I tried to talk about it. Others looked at me with that poor thing she still traumatized expression. My relationship with my parents changed in an interesting way. Before I was full of sorrows, especially because of their separation. After the experience, I was able to see them both as imperfect human beings, trying to do the best they could with the tools they had. One day, I sat down with each of them separately, and we had deep conversations. For the first time, I was able to talk about my feelings without accusations or resentment. With my mother especially, we developed a stronger connection. She began to notice that there was something different about me, something that went beyond a simple recovery. One night, while we were having tea on the porch, she asked me directly about the experience. I told everything, without fear of looking crazy. To my surprise, she not only believed me, but shared that she had always had spiritual experiences that she never had the courage to tell anyone about. As for my love life, a lot of people asked me if I wasn't afraid of getting involved with someone new, after losing Ethan in such a traumatic way. The truth is that my experience completely changed my outlook on relationships. I no longer had that anxiety about finding someone, that feeling that I needed someone else to complete me. I learned that love goes far beyond romantic relationships. Regarding spirituality, it was curious. Before the NDE, I attended church more out of habit than conviction. So paradoxically, I stopped going to church, but I felt closer to God than ever. Some people in the congregation didn't understand my departure. They thought I had lost faith. In fact, it was the opposite. My faith had become something so deep and personal that it no longer fit into rituals or dogma. I began to become interested in different spiritual traditions, not to follow a specific one, but to understand how different cultures interpreted what I had experienced. I read about Buddhism, Hinduism, Shamanism. It was fascinating to realize that, deep down, they all talked about the same thing, the connection with something bigger than ourselves. Friendships have also undergone a transformation. Some people who were just acquaintances became close friends, while some old friendships naturally dissolved. It was as if I had developed a kind of radar for authentic relationships. I could no longer maintain superficial relationships or relationships based solely on worldly interests. A special friendship that developed was with Clara a lady I met in a study group on spiritual experiences. She had experienced an NDE 20 years earlier and became something of a mentor to me. She was the one who helped me understand that I didn't need to convince anyone of the veracity of my experience. 
people who needed to hear my story would come along naturally. The most interesting thing was how people began to open up to me about their own spiritual experiences. It was as if my openness in talking about the subject gave permission for others to share their stories too. I discovered that many more people than we realize have had unexplainable experiences but are afraid to talk about them. The way I viewed death also completely changed. Not that I had lost my fear of her completely. I think that's part of our human nature. But now I understood that death is not an end, it is a transformation. This understanding allowed me to be present in a different way for people who were experiencing loss or facing terminal illnesses. Having had a near-death experience does not mean that life becomes a bed of roses. Challenges continue to appear, but the way of dealing with them changes completely. This became very clear to me when my grandfather was diagnosed with terminal cancer about a year after my NDE. My grandfather has always been a central figure in the family, one of those grandfathers who are like a safe haven for everyone. When we received the diagnosis, it was as if a dark cloud had formed over our family. Doctors gave him three months to live at most. I saw my mother going into despair, my uncles arguing about alternative treatments, everyone trying in some way to fight the inevitable. But with my grandfather, it was different. One night, while everyone had left the hospital, it was just the two of us in the room. He was especially anxious that day, and I realized it was fear, not exactly of death, but of the unknown. It was then that, for the first time, I shared my experience with him in detail. I told him about the light, about the feeling of absolute peace, about how the love I felt there was different from anything we know here. I talked about how there really isn't a separation, how we are all connected in ways that our minds can't fully comprehend. My grandfather listened to everything in silence, with tears in his eyes. From that conversation, I saw a profound change in him. Fear was being replaced by serene acceptance. He began to organize his things, not in a hurry or despair, but with the calm of someone preparing for an important trip. He began to have meaningful conversations with each family member, resolving old issues, expressing his love, but not everything was so smooth. Shortly after my grandfather's diagnosis, I was in a car accident. Nothing serious like the first time, but enough to require several knee surgeries. It was during recovery that I faced another type of challenge, dependence on painkillers. The doctors prescribed increasingly larger doses, and I soon realized that I could no longer do without them. It was different from the drug experience that had led to my NDE. This time it started legitimately, with medical prescriptions. But little by little, I realized that I was using the medication not just for physical pain, but for any type of emotional discomfort. That's when I met Grace Holland, a former addict turned therapist. Grace helped me understand that even after a profound spiritual experience, we are still human with all our weaknesses. She taught me that true spirituality is not in denying our humanity, but in accepting it and working with it consciously. With your help, I began a detox process. It wasn't easy. There were days of intense pain, sleepless nights, moments when I questioned everything. But something from my near-death experience helped me through these difficult times, the knowledge that everything has a purpose, even when we can't see it clearly. I replaced the painkillers with healthier practices, meditation, yoga, therapy. I learned breathing techniques that helped me in moments of intense pain. I discovered that the body has its own wisdom, and that sometimes pain is a teacher, not an enemy to be eliminated at any cost. Throughout this process, that light that I experienced during my NDE remained a constant reference. In the most difficult moments, when the physical or emotional pain seemed unbearable, I would close my eyes and connect with that memory of absolute peace. It was not an escape from reality, but a way of finding strength to face the challenges of the present. One of the most beautiful things that happened after my NDE was how, naturally, people started to come to me to talk about their fears and anxieties. Not that I became a counselor or anything like that, far from it. It was more like people felt like they could be real with me about their deepest fears, especially around death. I especially remember Maria, a co-worker who had lost her four-year-old daughter in an accident. She was destroyed, questioning God, life, everything. One day during lunch, she started crying and told me that she was thinking about suicide. At that moment, I felt like I should share my experience with her. I told him about what I had experienced, about the light, about the unconditional love I felt. I talked about how I had found Ethan and Lucas, and how I had come to understand that death is not an end, but a transformation. Maria cried a lot during our conversation, but they were different tears. 
For the first time since losing her daughter, she was able to feel some peace. After that day, Maria started looking for me frequently. Not so that I could solve your pain, no one can do that, but to share your feelings without fear of being judged. Little by little, I saw her finding the strength to continue living, no longer just surviving. She even began volunteering with other mothers who had lost children. Another memorable experience was with Mr. Jose, a man I met during my physiotherapy sessions. He was battling terminal cancer and, like most people in this situation, was very afraid of death. During our conversations in the waiting room, I gradually shared a little of my experience. Mr. Jose was skeptical at first, which I completely respected, but over time, he started to ask questions, to open up. The most beautiful thing was seeing how he began to face his last days with more serenity. Not that the fear had completely disappeared, but he managed to find a balance between accepting the inevitable and enjoying the time he had left. One thing I've learned is that everyone processes these types of experiences differently. Some need scientific explanations, others seek comfort in religion, and others simply want to know that they are not alone in their questions. I learned to respect each path, each way of dealing with pain and fear. I also began to notice significant signs and coincidences in my life. For example, whenever someone really needed to hear about my experience, something would happen to bring us closer together. It was as if there was a greater intelligence orchestrating these meetings. It wasn't something I forced or sought out, it just happened. On one occasion I was invited to share my story at a grieving support group. I admit I was nervous. It's one thing to talk to someone individually, it's another to talk to a group. But when I started talking, the words flowed naturally. The most interesting thing was seeing how each person took from my story exactly what they needed to hear at that moment. A young woman from the group came to me later to say that my story had saved her life. She was planning suicide that week, but something I shared about the unconditional love I felt during my NDE changed her mind. That was when I understood that perhaps this was one of the purposes for coming back, to share this experience with whoever needed to listen. But I've always been careful not to cast myself as some kind of guru or especially enlightened person. After all, I remain an ordinary person with my doubts and limitations. The difference is that now I carry with me the certainty that there is something greater guiding us, even when we cannot understand why things happen. It's been a few years since my near-death experience, and the more time passes, the more meaning I find in those moments I experienced. It is interesting how certain understandings mature over time, as if they were seeds planted during the experience that are only now beginning to fully blossom. One of the deepest reflections I have is about the purpose of life. Before the NDE, I was always chasing external goals, professional success, relationships, material possessions. Not that these things have lost their importance, but now I see them differently. I understood that we are here mainly to learn and grow spiritually, and that every experience, good or bad, is part of this learning. Sometimes I find myself thinking about time, how obsessed we humans are with it. We live on the run, always worried about the future or stuck in the past. During my experience, I experienced a state where time did not exist. It was as if past, present and future were one. Now I try to bring some of that understanding into my daily life. Of course, I still use a watch and diary like everyone else, but I try to live each moment more consciously and presently. Another thing that completely changed was my relationship with fear. Not that I have become a person without fears, they still exist. But now I understand that fear is just a part of the human experience, not something that needs to control me. During the NDE, I experienced a state of complete trust in the universe, a feeling that everything was exactly as it should be. I try to connect with this feeling in moments of anxiety or uncertainty. The issue of forgiveness also gained a new dimension in my life. When you experience that unconditional love, that total understanding that I felt during my NDE, you realize that holding on to hurts is like carrying unnecessary weight. I was able to forgive people who hurt me deeply, not because their actions were justifiable, but because I understood that we are all at different stages of our spiritual journey. One of the deepest reflections I have is on the nature of consciousness. During my experience, I was clearly conscious, even more conscious than normally, even when my brain was practically inactive. It made me question a lot of what I thought I knew about the mind and consciousness. Are we just our brains? Or is there something more, something that transcends the physical? I also started to observe more closely the small miracles of everyday life. A sunset, a child's smile, 
a friend's hug. These are moments that now carry a much deeper meaning for me. It's as if that experience gave me a pair of special glasses through which I can see the beauty and sacredness in things that previously went unnoticed. The issue of death continues to be a central theme in my reflections. Not that I have all the answers, far from it, but that paralyzing fear I had was replaced by respectful curiosity. I see death now as a transition, not an end. This has completely changed the way I live my life. I don't live in fear of dying, but I also don't waste the precious time I have here. I've also been thinking a lot about human connections. During the NDE, I experienced a state of total union, where I could feel that we are all interconnected in some way. This made me really question the extreme individualism of our society. How would we be different if we could truly feel and live this connection in our everyday lives? One of the most practical reflections I have is on the importance of cultivating elevated states of consciousness while still alive. Through meditation, prayer, contact with nature, I can sometimes touch, even if briefly, that peace I experienced during the NDE. It is as if there are portals to that dimension of love and understanding, and our task is to learn to access them. Today, when I look back and see how far I have come since my near-death experience, I feel a deep sense of gratitude. Gratitude even for the difficult moments that led me there, because without them, I may never have experienced such a profound transformation in my life. A lot of people ask me if I miss that state of peace and unconditional love that I experienced during my NDE. The truth is, yes, I feel it. It's impossible not to miss something so extraordinary. But I understood that we are not here to constantly live in that state. We are here to learn, grow, and most importantly, help each other on this journey we call life. My routine today is quite normal. I work, take care of the house, meet friends, have my moments of joy and also of sadness. The difference is that now I carry within me a kind of inner compass, a reference to what really matters. When I find myself too caught up in mundane worries or unnecessary conflicts, I try to connect with that experience and remember the greater perspective it brought me. One of the most beautiful things that happened was the reconciliation with my parents. Even though they were separated, they found a way to maintain a respectful relationship, and our family, although different from what it was before, is stronger and more united. So I think my experience helped us all understand that love goes far beyond the forms we imagine for it. I still have dreams and goals, of course, but they changed their nature. They are no longer based solely on external achievements, but mainly on how I can grow as a human being and contribute in some way to making the world a better place. Sometimes that means just listening to someone who is going through a difficult time. Other times it means sharing a little of my experience with those who need hope. I also learned to respect my own pace more. Before, I was always running around, always anxious, always thinking I was late for something. Today I understand that everything has its right time to happen. This doesn't mean I've become passive. I'm still doing my part, but without the desperate anxiety I used to have. I keep a journal where I record insights and reflections that come from this experience. It's interesting how, even after so much time, I still discover new meanings and learnings. It's as if those moments I lived between life and death were an inexhaustible source of wisdom, which gradually reveals itself as I am ready to understand. I don't consider myself a special or more evolved person for having gone through this experience. In fact, I feel that it has made me more humble, more aware of my limitations, and more understanding of the weaknesses of others. After all, we are all apprentices in this great school that is life. For the future, I don't have big plans or grand expectations. My greatest desire is to continue growing, learning, and most importantly, keeping that light that I experienced alive within me. I know that important transformations are coming, that experience showed me that, but I no longer feel anxious trying to control or predict everything. If there is one message I would like to leave to anyone reading my story, it is this. No matter how dark the night seems, there is a light within each of us. Sometimes we need to go through difficult experiences to discover this light, but it is always there. And when we find it, we realize that we were never truly alone on this journey.